Okay, so it's about reincarnation and that's the topic and there's a few questions. So what I'll do is I'll just like whiz through all of it and then you can just probably like touch on what you feel. They probably all overlap anyway, but okay. so where where I was with this for like like I'm 44 now when all my life pretty much I just in my belief I didn't believe in reincarnation. I thought um it's not it's 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 not what we believe and I thought um none of the abrahamic religions like christianity and judaism they believe in it i i'm not i don't know if that's of truth now and so that's kind of opened up an interest that i never would have been interested in so i think there's a fair few questions on it so then i know you've you've started to answer some of them for me so so when someone passes away and like you said sometimes it can take 15 years for somebody to come back and and sometimes it's longer short uh, one of the question is like how how is that decided is that like what's even happening over there um is another question and and then like is it like the more work that i don't even know how to put it like the 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 more ego they have and the more purification they're needing are they then therefore having more time in the astral before they come back. And then things like what you hear that, you know, if, if you've been a bad person, you'll come back as an insect. I don't know if you've heard stuff like that. So that so it's like, you know, how, how does it get decided of how you come back in which life? And then things like, are we, no matter how many times we've come, come on earth, do we have the same lessons that we're, we're, we're having to learn and overcome and transcend and then we're getting uh, more opportunities to to work on them and then you know is there heaven and uh, hell and you know is it only when we've completely gone through purification that we then you know like we, in islam we talk about the judgment day so then i'm thinking well when when does that happen does that happen after each life or does it happen right at the end <laughs> so there's just a fair few questions on on like how do i even bring uh, reincarnation into my belief i think that's kind of like where i am with it i don't even know if you've got a video on this where if you've touched on this so apologies if you have and then just direct me if you have and then i'll i'll go and watch that mm -hmm. yeah great well the whole channel really and the book that i wrote and just the whole purpose behind teaching astral projection is to, so it's not rather just to tell people about, oh, you know, the afterlife is like this or that, but really to uh, encourage people to find it out for themselves. Because if you can have enough experiences uh, and spend enough time there, it's usually that you will begin to start interacting with people there. You know, and you'll start to get a sense of, of all of this. You did ask me a question uh, in text also about, I think a, a, an Islamic teacher or something told you that Islam doesn't really cover it, so it's not that important. And, and in one aspect, you know, that's true too, because our whole consciousness, the entirety of our being is, is here and now rather than in the past. And one can transform to very high degrees, pretty much without the knowledge of, of past lives. However, usually it happens that one will begin to ha perhaps bring up certain memories. But it's not, it's not everyone's, let's say, purpose uh, or aptitude, let's say, or, or interest to do that. So it's really about how interested are you in these mysteries? Because we can all be a spiritual person or a religious person, but do you want to be a a person of who is interested in spiritual mysteries, who is interested in esoteric mysteries, in these deep spiritual sciences? And there's a lot of deep and advanced and elaborate studies of the dimensions of the different planes of existence, of the processes of the afterlife, they're very deep and intimate and, and intricate. And it requires, uh, even if you study them, it requires a lot of deep meditation in order to, to understand them. But I'll try to just uh, give you the gist of it more simply, that when a person dies, 
well, firstly, let me let me begin here and now, right? All of us are here, here and now, alive. We have our consciousness. Just to you know, give measurements, we have a certain percentage of ego and a percentage of awakened essence, right? When you're asking that question, it comes from quite a sincere soul part of you, right? An essence that we're trying to help our essence to grow by asking these questions. So essentially, that essence or that part of you that you sense, everything that is sort of uh, good, um, eternal, that wants to know things, to become conscious, that is essentially, and, and those, those moments in life when we feel peace and we feel unity, we feel compassion and, and all of these good things, that's essentially our heaven within us, right? You ask, this, does heaven and hell exist? Yes. But those are states of consciousness also within us that we can feel here and now. Those moments of life when we're tired, upset, we lose our faith, uh, we're, we're perhaps angry with someone, and we're in inner conflict, suffering, that's hell, right? Now, when we die, in a way, not much changes. The constitution, let's say, of our consciousness is the same. But the only difference is now we don't have a physical body. And the physical material plane, it's a gift in the sense that it's something permanent and stable. We can live in the same house. We can have some stability in this physical world. Now imagine that that physical world goes and everything or reality is then created by your own constitution of consciousness, meaning your egos and also your essence. And the, the environments that you experience, just like in dreams, will, will be just that. You will, uh, there's a great part of the Hindu teachings, because I think it says it in some parts of other religions like Islam or Christi Christianity, but there's a very good part of the Hindustani teachings because generally speaking, uh, Islamic or Christian understanding, it's like you go to heaven or hell. But in Hindu understanding, uh, they understand it more that the soul will travel between heaven and hell. And that is also suffering, right? So it's not rather that we just want to go to heaven, a spiritual investigator or seeker should be should want to become conscious of both heaven and hell in order to have real knowledge, right? Gnosis. So we lose our physical body and we go between those basically good dreams and bad dreams. Just like in our life now, we wake up and sometimes we have nightmares and sometimes we have really nice dreams. It's just essentially like that. Now, it's not just as simple as that. There are different planes and dimensions. So first is the physical plane, and I'm going to simplify it a bit. Next is the astral plane, and essentially, next is the causal plane. Now, the physical plane and the astral plane are the parts where our ego exists. These are the third, it's the third dimension and the fifth dimension. Ego exists there. Now, next up is the sixth dimension. And that sixth dimension is related to, is, is linked to God. It's linked to divinity. It's like where we can reach our hand out to divinity. And within that divinity, within that intelligence, lies all of the, the higher laws, uh, like the law of karma too. So generally what happens is that when a person dies, they'll go into the astral. And yes, you're very right that you're very correct in saying that it depends on how much ego a person has, or the purity of that soul, in the sense that how, what will they experience in the astral, and uh, and how long they'll stay there, and and for what things they will be quote unquote judged for, 
but we can't judge that because everything is determined by divinity. It's determined by the higher soul, the higher self, or the inner God of, of that individual. We all have a sort of inner judge, let's say, our inner father aspect. So when a person dies, they spend a certain amount of time in the in these inner planes, the astral plane, and at some point, that soul will be taken to the causal plane. That means it's taken to this sixth dimension where divinity is and the intelligences of it is. And that's where they will see the cause and effect of everything, of their whole life. So that's when people, you know, when people say, uh, your whole life flashes before your eyes, right? That means that at some point after we die, we're going to experience our whole life from birth to death. And we'll see it in an entirely different way, a more objective way, at the causal level, at the sixth dimensional level. This is a whole uh, study, of course, and I can send you uh, resources and, and, and things to study about it all. Uh, but yes, that, that's that's the gist of it, that once, at, at some point after death, you'll be judged, but it's not judged in a, in a religious, like, judgmental sense, right? It's, it's scientific, it's direct, you'll know it for yourself. You'll go through everything in your life and, and realize everything that you are, everything that you experienced, and you'll have a different understanding. And through that, through that understanding, you'll then follow a path. You'll know what to do. Because, you know, I hear and see a lot of people online saying, why would I want to come back to, to be born again? You know, I, I hate life, etc. Uh, but when you see life from the aspect of your inner God, it's totally different. You, you know, you'll, you'll get different motivations. So we all come back to life through that. Yes, that's essentially it. So what's the lesson? Is there one lesson? The one lesson that they keep on coming back for? So it sounds like mm -hmm. when they pass away, they're still in like, let's say, the dimensions where, where there's ego. When they get to the sixth, they, they seems like there is no ego, then, then they have to, then they come back. If they've reached the state where there's just soul and no ego, why do they need to come back? And is it to repeat the same lessons that they never really um, transcended from in the previous? Yes, yes, exactly. And the person is, because the person has to be formed first. This is the saying or the teaching that a human has to be a perfect human in the sense that it can be a perfect vehicle or receptacle for its inner divinity. And that takes time to learn because it has a lot of, we have a lot of conditioning and ego. So it's pulled up to, let's say, the doors of, of the house of God for judgment. It's essentially like going back to, back, going back to your inner home and your parents telling you all the things you did wrong. So go back and learn it all. And those things that we have to learn are, you know, th generally speaking, things like ego. You know, if we, if we hated people for our whole lives and then we realize our, we really realize our mistake and say, okay, I'm going to go back. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to learn what it really means to love others, to really help others. You know, that's something I really want to achieve. It's something deep in the soul of the person. And it talks to us while we're alive through our conscience. So every life we have, it's a, it's a learning process of, of these deep and, and intimate things. And as one progresses more and more, a person forms themselves. It's like a sculpture, you know. You, you start to perfect yourself very, very gradually. Thank you.